and energy bills may also run further for businesses as well as households. And um, yeah, I'm gonna touch on the scriptures after I read the article, but yeah, for the businesses, that means these businesses are gonna basically fall out of, um, they're basically gonna, their businesses are gonna collapse and that's due to the economy failure. And that's one thing about um, C19. With C19, they basically, um, they basically covered the collapse of the economy. And because of the collapse of the economy, these businesses won't be able to last. And because um, prices are hiking off now, these businesses won't be able to basically stay in business. And that reminds me of the scripture, um, Yeah, Ecclesiastes 12 and 3 and it says in a day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few and those that look out the windows will be darkened and that's basically um, that's basically the loss of jobs the loss of jobs and basically um, when they look out, out the window they basically see no future so what they're witnessing, what they're witnessing is basically um, terrible times or evil times. Eve being, Eve being the time and ill being bad. So the Lord's going to bring bad times upon the people, especially in this day and age. So the Lord said he's going to punish the world for his iniquity. And, um, where was I? Um, Russia and Ukraine are also large producers and exporters of agricultural products such as wheat and some metals. These products have become more expensive on financial markets, potentially leading to the future increase in food and materials prices in the UK. And um, yeah, this is basically this is basically um, gonna cause a famine, and not only a famine, it's gonna cause people to um, basically invade one another because um, if the food prices go high and there's also a blackout, the food that these storehouses have or these shops or these shops they're gonna um, spoil. And it won't be enough and people are gonna fight for basically um they're gonna fight for these food they're gonna fight for the food that's left over like it says here um And this is um second address six and twenty two and it says and it says suddenly shall the stone places appear on stone for the full storehouse should it be found empty and that's going into um how these shops aren't gonna have food anymore and the trumpet shall give a sound which every man heareth they shall suddenly be afraid at that time shall friends fight one ag one against another like enemies and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein the spring of the fountain shall stand still and in three hours they shall not run and that's going into no water and um like i was saying these um yeah like i was saying um in today's day and age in today's day and age, um, 
these power plants are the ones that control the grid and supply power to the people and the homes. So, um, and the main use of generating electricity is basically um, basically water. We use thousands upon thousands of gallons of water to um, to basically keep these power stations open. And if the water stands still, then there's going to be complete back blackouts. And not only is there going to be blackouts, um, these shops and their fridges, they're going to be off too. And that's going to cause the food to spoil. Then it says um, inflation forecast raised after the invasion of Ukraine. It says in early February 2022, the Bank of England was faced with forecasting the CPI in April 2022 to peak at 7.25%. The, the inflation rate had been expected to ease somewhat during 2022 but that's not going to happen because the law said it wasn't going to prolong these prophecies anymore and it says since Russia invaded Ukraine econ economy, economic forecasters have raised the expectations for consumer price inflation not just in near the term but that it will be higher for longer. And, um, I'm just gonna quickly skip some of this information because it's not useful. Yeah, it says, um, it says low income house households spend a larger proportion than average on energy and food, so will be more affected by price increases. And what you gotta remember about um, C119, it was so, um, they could hide the crash of the economy, and not only the economy, but, um, so that um, these people who are separated into the rich, the upper class, the middle class and the lower class, that was here before C19, but when C19 came it destroyed the middle class and now it's separated from the rich and poor. So all these people who used to be somewhat well off, they're now um, in that low income, low income, or lower class now. And you heard what he said about um, them using too much energy and buying too much food. And it's funny because when the Lord brings this famine, these people aren't going to be able to handle it. Um, this is second address 15 and 14 and it says woe to the world and them that draw them for the sword and the destruction draweth nigh and one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands and that's going into civil war and that can easily happen especially when these blackouts come Like it says, um, like it says, um, yeah, like it says in second edge is fifteen, and um, ten it says, the whole my people is led as a flock the slaughter 
I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. You can go back. And um, Egypt is talking about Babylon or America, which is known as spiritual Egypt and spiritual Sodom. He says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretch our arm and smite Egypt with plague as before and I will destroy the land of so the Lord said he was going to smite Egypt with the plague as before now let's go back down to um, verse 15 it says for the sword and the destruction draweth nigh and one people shall stand up to fight against another and swords in their hands for there shall be a sedition among men a sedition is just going into um, an uprising against the government and invading one another so like I was saying um, because of the food prices increasing due to the inflation if the blackout happens but it will happen but when it does um, these people are going to be in fear now not only are they going to be in fear but the first thing they're going to do is try and look for food and they won't be able to find any they'll probably see someone else with food and decide oh let me go um, pay them a visit like my children are hungry and we need to eat and when people are hungry um, they do things that that they normally don't do because um, those survival instincts kick in and people will, are going to betray each other man all because of the lack of food and it says um, they shall not regard their kings nor princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. So they're not going to hearken or listen unto the voices of the politicians, the presidents, or what is it again? Um, the prime minister. They're just going to do according to their own heart. And basically, um, like it says, invading one another. And basically destroying their houses and taking their goods. Then it says, um, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able, for because of their pride the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. So like the Lord was saying, man, because of their pride, all this is going to happen. The Lord's going to um, revenge the pride of the people. And in verse 19 it says, um, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbour, but shall destroy their houses with the sword, and spoil their goods, and some of their goods go into um, basically their foods, or even their women. Because in the time of the blackout, no one's going to care about electronics, because they're not going to work. Like once the battery's gone, they're not going to care. It's going to be um, not useful to them in the time of a blackout. But um, food, water, um, even women are going to be spoils in that time. And it says because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So <laughs> because of the lack of food or the lack of victuals, there's going to be great tribulation. And yeah, man. And then there's also Jacob's trouble, which is a time like never before. And more than likely, this is these things that are going to happen is going to be during Jacob's trouble. And that's
like it says here in um, Jeremiah 30 and 7, it says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. But it's even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So this this judgment that the Lord's going to bring is going to be a time like never before. So the Lord basically gonna do things he's never done before on this earth. And those that who are going to be saved out of um, the time of Jacob's trouble, which is a time like never before, is the dialect of the Israelites or the one third or the 33.3% 33 33 Zechariah 13 and 8 and it says and it shall come to pass then that all the land saith the Lord two parts of the land shall be cut off um, two parts shall be cut off and die but the first shall be left therein and I will bring the third part through the fire basically um, the furnace have adversity and I will refine them as silver is refined and I will try them as gold is tried they shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God, or Yahweh. But Hashem Yahweh is my God. So these two fires are going to be cut off during the time of Jacob's trouble. And even by the nuclear missiles. And, um, and this is basically what the two thirds did to Jeremiah and then Jeremiah basically put a curse on them and this is Jeremiah 18 and 18 and it says then said they come and let us devise devices devise devices against Jeremiah for the law shall not perish from the priest nor counsel from the wise nor the word from the prophet come and let us smite him with the tongue and let us not give heed. Let us not give heed to any of his words. So they didn't want to hear the word of Jeremiah or the word of the Lord. And that reminds me of the scripture where it says, um, "Speak unto us smooth things, prophesy unto us deceits." He says, um, "Give heed to me, O Lord, and hearken to the voice of them that contend with me." This is these two thirds. Shall so evil be recompensed for good? For they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them. So Jeremiah was basically speaking on the behalf of the two thirds. But the two thirds wanted to kill him. And to turn away thy wrath from them. And therefore deliver up the children. Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine. <laughs> it's funny because we're talking about the famine as well. <laughs> and the Lord said this was going to happen to his people again, man. It says, therefore, deliver up their children to the famine and put out their blood by the force of the sword. Or the force of the sword being Esau, Edom. When it comes down with great wrath. And during the time of the civil war, when the people fight against each other, because of the lack of bread and let their wives be bereaved of their children and be widows and let their men and let their men be put to death and let their young men 
He's slain by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from their houses. When that's how bring a troop suddenly upon them. And that's going into um that's going into um what's it called um when these when these martial law troops enter into their houses at night, they're gonna go door to door and basically destroy Jake with their weapons man. Would they have digged a pit to take me and hit snares from my feet? Yet Lord Down knows all their counsel against me to slay me. So like I was saying, they was attempting to slay Jeremiah, the prophet. Forgive not their iniquity, neither blot out their sin from thy sight. But let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them in the time of thine anger. And the time of the Lord's anger is um, during the time of Jacob's trouble. So during the time of Jacob's trouble and the great day of the Lord, man, where the Lord pours out his wrath. So, um, like I was saying, um, Jeremiah said to them, said to the Lord, to basically um, to allow their blood to be poured out with, by the force of the sword. And that sword is um, Esau Edom. And this is um, Psalm 30, no, this is Psalm 17 and 13. Arise, O Lord, to disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So the wicked is the sword of the Lord. And then, um, and this is how we find out who the wicked is. And this is, um, Malachi 1 and 4 it says, Whereas Edom saves, we are impoverished, but we shall return and build the desolate places, thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. So the sword who the Lord was talking about, and what Jeremiah was talking about was Esau Edom. So let Esau Eden come upon these two first to destroy them. This is Ezekiel 21 and 8 and it says Again the word of the Lord came to unto me saying Son of man prophesy and say Thus saith the Lord Say a sword, a sword is sharpened And also furbished It is sharpened To make a sword slaughter And what did Jeremiah say man Let the um, two thirds Let the blood be poured out by the force of the sword it is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth, it contemplates the rod of my son as every tree. And he had given it to be furbished that it may be handled. So the Lord is basically sharpening up Esau so that he can um, put work on his two thirds. And it says, um, it's furbished to give into the hand of the slayer. <laughs> and then, um, And 
this is um Amos nine. Amos nine and eight, and it says, "Behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom, being um Babylon, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord." And that's going into the remnant or the portion of Jacob or the next with 144,000 and the sincere um, the sincere men, women and children who are part of the one third for lo I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations like as corn is sifted in a sieve yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth see and that's what the Lord's doing is um is sifting the house of Israel so that um two-thirds the two-thirds and um, the one-third the one-third being sifted out of the two-thirds that's why these two-thirds have been drawn to um to all this folly and to these camps that don't even know what they're talking about but the lord doesn't want them because he's going to destroy them and then verse 10 it says all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword which says the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us and the yeah, Amazon was kind of reading man and it says in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen so the um, the 144,000 and close up the breaches and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. And that's going into um, the actual people and not our actual house because the Lord said um, he was going to make a spiritual house. And he also called um, the people of Israel lively stones <laughs> that they may possess the remnant of Eden and all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader outgrates him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall mount. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities, and that's going into um, how the Lord is going to take the Israelites out of captivity and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them and I will plant them upon their land and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them saith the Lord thy God and that reminds me of um, the scripture where it talks about um, um, let me just get it, man. Isaiah 65 and 18 it says but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I created for behold I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and a people a joy and I will rejoice in Jerusalem and the joy in my people and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her and the voice of crying and that's going to come after um, America is destroyed yeah, it's gonna um, come after America's been destroyed. And then it says, um, There shall be no more dense an infant of days, nor an old man that have not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be a curse. And that's not talking about um, the children dying at a young age it's talking about um, how the children are going to be young forever man 
and they shall build houses and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them and really um these heathens are gonna do that for us they're gonna do all the work and we're gonna take the credit just like they did and they shall not build and another inhabit they shall not plant and another eat for the days of a tree are the days of my people and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands they shall not labor in vain nor bring forth for trouble for they are the seed of the blessed of the lord and their offspring with them so we're going to have children in the kingdom too we're going to be able to drink in the kingdom and eat in the kingdom and it shall come to pass before they call i will answer and while they are yet speaking i will hear the wolf and the lamb shall feed together and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock and the dust shall be the serpent's meat but shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains serve the lord and that's gonna take place after babylon being destroyed And this is um, Ezekiel 38 and 1 and it says And the word of the Lord came unto me saying Son of man, set thy, face, set thy face against Gog The land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal And prophesy against him Being um, Russia Because they're the ones that are living in that land right now And I will turn thee back And put hooks into thy jaws and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armour, even a great company with bucklers and shields and all of them handling swords. And this is going into World War Three, And Russia is going to be a big part. To, they have a big part to play in World War Three. And like the Lord said, he's going to put hooks back into their, door, into their jaws. So he's going to turn them back to... Um, how there was, like in um, the time of the Soviet Union or the USSR. So the Lord's gonna put that evil thought back into their mind so they can do his will. And then it says Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them. So Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya are gonna be with Russia. All of them with shield and helmet, so they're going to be ready to fight. Goma, also known as Turkey, and all his bands, the house of Togomath, and the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. So, yeah, man, the Lord's basically going to cause these nations to assemble and fight against Babylon. <laughs> I hear it. Joel three and nine and it says Pro proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near and let them come up. And that's why you're seeing um, all these nations preparing for war now. You've got um, Russia doing their thing in Ukraine. you got these um, these eastern nations turning up, turning up over there in the east, preparing themselves, basically um, getting those ICBM missiles ready. And it says, beat your plowshares into swords 
and you're throwing hooks into spears, let the weight sound strong. Because um, um a plowshare and a pruning hook is um is an agriculture agriculture um instruments or farming instruments and the Lord's telling them to beat them into weapons of war. And it says um let the weak sound strong because all these other nations now have intercontinental ballistic missiles and they're going to use them. They're going to shoot their missiles on America and destroy the whole land. And it says um and it says And it says, assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together around the belt. Tither cause the mighty ones to come down, O Lord. <laughs> Let the heathen be weakened and come up to the valley of Yahweh Shapak or Yahweh's judgment. For there will there for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. So the Lord's going to use this war to judge all the heathen, including Esau Edom. He's gonna cause them. Oh, come on. It's going to cause them to fight against one another. Oh yeah, like I was saying, um, these nations now have intercontinental ballistic missiles and they're going to be used and the Lord calls them the weapons of his inclination and they're going to be used to destroy Babylon because after Babylon's been destroyed, that's when the kingdom can be, that's when the kingdom can come upon the earth and the Israelites will get their rest. And it says, um, and this is Jeremiah 50 and 23. It says, How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou was not aware, thou art found and also caught, because thou hast striven against the Lord, and Babylon's ways or America's ways are against the Lord, that's how the Lord said he's going to destroy it, and that's why he makes mention of um, the eyes of the Lord that are upon the sinful kingdom. And then it says, um, the Lord have opened his armory and have brought forth the weapons of his indignation. For that is the work of the Lord. For this is the work of the Lord, God of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. And the land of the Chaldeans is basically another word for America. Come against her from the uttermost border upon her storehouses, cast her apart, cast her off as heaps and destroy her utterly. Let nothing of her be left. <laughs> It's like the Lord said, man, he's going to, um, he said, um, he's going to destroy the land and nothing, 
and the land won't be inhabited anymore. He says, slay all her bullocks, let them go down to the slaughter, warn to them for their days come, the time of their visitation. The voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple. And then it says, um, call together the archers against Babylon, and the archers being um, these other nations and uh, the ICBM missiles. Because now all the all the nations that come against um, Babylon, they all they all have um, what's it called um, nuclear capability. And it says, "Call to go the archers against Babylon, all ye that bend the bow, camp against it round about. Let none thereof escape. Recompense her according to her work, according to all that she has done. Do unto her." So she have been proud against the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. And then, um, so yeah, man, the Lord gonna destroy Babylon with these, with the help of the other nations. He's gonna cause um, these ICBM missiles to be fired off to destroy the entire land. And then. Um, Like it says here in um, This is Isaiah 13 and 5 and it says um, They come from a far country From the ends of heaven Even the Lord And the weapons of his indignation To destroy the whole land And his weapons of indignation is um, Is that intercontinental ballistic missiles It says How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty He says, therefore shall all hands be faint and every man's heart shall melt and they shall be afraid, pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. And then it says, um, behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun and moon, the sun shall be darkened in his going forth. The moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the anguish of the proud to cease. And will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. This is I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Even even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir and then it goes back to um, talking about how the Lord is going to destroy the land of Babylon and it says therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth shall move out of their place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and the day of his fierce anger and that's going to happen because um, all of these warheads that are going to hit the earth going to cause the earth to tremble and shake and quake it shall be as a chased roe and as a sheep that no man take it up thus shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone to his own land everyone that is found shall be thrust through and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword it says their children shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes, the houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Or basically um, the term raped. And then it says, Behold, I will stir up the meat. The meat's going into um Russia. 
and against them which shall not regard silver and as for gold they shall not delight in it they ain't gonna care about bribery they're not gonna care about um the money they're, just, they're gonna want to destroy america man and it says the bow shall dash the young men to pieces and they shall have no pity upon the fruit of the womb and the eyes shall not spare children and those bows is going into um the nuclear missiles man because um the bows on the bows are basically the silos and the arrows being the actual missile so these missiles are going to be shot off like a mighty archer and it's going to basically um, not not turn back and destroy the land and it says i'm babylon the glory of kingdoms the beauty of the Chaldees excellency shall be as when god overthrew sodom and gomorrah and the Lord, um, Yehovah Shemal Shai, destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. So the daughter of Babylon is going to be destroyed again with fire. And then it says on um, verse 20, it says, It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there. Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Why? Because um, the Arabians and all these other nations come to America to get rich off it or get rich off the Israelites. It says, But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and the houses shall be, be full with doleful creatures, and I shall dwell there, and the satyrs shall dance there, and wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and the dragons in their pleasant places. And her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. So the Lord's not going to prolong Babylon to keep being here. He's going to destroy it. And this is Revelation 18 and 3 that says, But all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, being the ways of America. But for example, um, you'll see um, McDonald's, um, these American fast food places are all over the world now, like KFC, um, TJ Fridays. Uh, what else? Um, I've already said McDonald's um, and um, also even the banks now over here in the UK there's a, a Bank of America here now <laughs> and it says um, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her de delicacies and that's why they talked about the Arabians being not, not being able to pitch their tent there or live deliciously off America anymore. Because um, like it says here in verse 3, they lived um, deliciously. They basically, um, they were back through the abundance of our delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. And that final plague is... Um, the nuclear missile man or the nuclear missiles that's the final play and the two thirds the two thirds are gonna be destroyed and it says um for our sins have reached unto heaven and god have remembered their iniquities we will reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to our works in the cup which she had filled filled her double how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she has saved, for she saith in her heart, I said a queen, I'm no widow and shall see no sorrow. So um they're expecting 
not to get touched and the Lord's basically gonna call all these plagues to happen in, in Babylon so that um, they will see sorrow and they will see um, basically pain then it says therefore shall her plagues come in one day death and mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they see when they shall see the smoke of her burning so these merchants or these um other nations that had um that had um what's the word um uh yeah investments or businesses in babylon they're gonna wail and cry for the um for the destruction of babylon why because they've lost all their things <coughs> it says standing far off from the fear of her torment saying alas alas the great city babylon that is mighty that mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her <laughs> for no man buy their merchandise anymore because they're not going to have it it's going to be destroyed like the lord said um um what's the word um it shall never be inhabited and it's going to be turned into a desolate wilderness he said the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet all like time wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments um, and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee and thou shalt find them no more at all why because the land's going to be utterly destroyed with thermal nuclear missiles and um, And it says the merchants of these things which were made rich by her so these merchants were made rich by america shall, shall stand far off for the fear of her torment weeping and wailing because imagine that um you spent millions and millions of dollars or pounds or whatever currency and invested in your business in america and then all of a sudden in one hour it's gone <laughs> I surprised they're going to be crying and wailing and saying that last at last that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls for in one hour so great, great riches has come to naught so like it says um so great, great riches has come to naught so the riches that they did have is now gone and every shipmaster on all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off so people are gonna um, basically see the destruction of Babylon including um, the people who live in these different countries they're gonna be able to um, see the destruction too and not only that, they're going to feel the earthquakes that's going to come from the missiles bombarding America. <clears throat> John said it was 200 million, man. And that's, um, that's a lot of warheads. And cried when they saw the smoke of a burning, saying, What city is like unto the great city? And they cast dust on their heads, basically showing the mourning, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas. The great city where we were made rich, all that had ships in the sea by reason of her, 
of her costliness for in one hour is she made desolate rejoice over her thou heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets for God have avenged you on her and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea saying thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all <laughs> and the voice of the harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpet trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee like for example um, when you're watching the brothers videos all you're hearing is um, just loud music it's constantly just loud music and um, and the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For the merchants that were great men of the earth, for by their sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints, and all of all that was slain upon the earth. And that's going into um, America, man. How. The majority of the prophets are over there, man. <laughs> and not only that, man. Um, yeah, when the devil comes with great wrath with his MLTB, he's going to be putting the prophets to death. Sorry. Yeah, they're going to be um, putting the prophets to death and basically beheading them because they don't want to bow down to the New World Order. Um, <laughs> and it says, um, It's Jeremiah 51 and 6 and it says, Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. So you see, it's the time of the Lord's vengeance to destroy Babylon. He will render unto her a recompense. Babylon have been a golden copper in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of our wine, therefore the nations are mad. Why? Because they follow the ways of America and they also partook in its feast days, its festival days, its holidays and basically kept their ordinances and it says um oh yeah um not only that but more than likely um these other nations have investments in Babylon so when it is destroyed <laughs> they're gonna be pissed off because they've lost everything and it says um, it says Babylon had sloppy, um, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed how for her take balm for her pain if so be she may be healed <laughs> and it says we would have healed Babylon but she is not healed forsake her let us go everyone into his own country for a judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies so yeah man the Lord knows everything about Babylon man, and all the iniquity they've been doing the Lord have brought forth our righteousness come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God <coughs> Um,
Yeah, this is um Yeah, Revelation 17 and 12, and it says, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast, or one hour with um, the pagan Roman emperor. Or, <clears throat> These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. And that's what you see here. That's why um, there's a thing called the NATO and the EU. And also um, the United Nations. And it says, um, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. And they that are with him are called the chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The words which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, and people, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues, going into America. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. He shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So these other nations, they're going to despise America. And the way it's going to be burned is by thermonuclear fire, or by those arrows of indignation, or the weapons of indignation. And it says, um, for Yahweh put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, unto the word of God shall be fulfilled. So right now, so right now they're kind of at peace with each other and basically um, doing this um, united and being one kind of thing. But, um, but, um, the time's gonna come where, like the scripture said, um, the ten horns, <laughs> they're gonna turn on the whore, who's the Babylon, or America. These other nations are gonna turn on Babylon and burn her with fire. <coughs> like he says, um, Like it says in Isaiah 54 and 16, it says, Behold, I created the smith that blows the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I've created the waster to destroy. And that waster is the intercontinental ballistic missiles. And um, this is how the Lord is going to destroy Babylon. John basically saw um, the war that was taking place. Because um, it says um, because um, the first the first war was passed, which is World War One, and the second war being World War Two, then it mentions how how um the third war cometh quickly, and um this war is gonna be by burning through the fire, like it says in um, Isaiah nine and five, it says. For every battle of the war is a confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. So this war is going to be with burning and fuel of fire. And it says on um, Revelation 9 and 16, and it says. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, and I heard the number of them being 200 missiles, man, 200 nuclear missiles, and all those um, miss, all those ICBM missiles are going to hold like either 15 heavy nuclear warheads or 24 lighter ones. And it says, And thus I saw the horses in a vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and jasmine. And in brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. And out of their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. And that's going into um, the nuclear missiles and the warheads. Because out of the warheads, that's what's going to be issuing the fire and brimstone.
for the powers in their mouth, being the warhead or the nuclear payload, and then their tails. All their tails are like onto serpents. And the reason why John said um, their power was in their tail is because when um, these silos open up and they're fired off, like an archer bending the bow and shooting it, these um, missiles are going to fly off. And how these missiles are going to fly off is by way of, um, of the fuel and fire that's burning behind them. And that's why John said the power is in the mouth and the tail. So a fire issues out of the out of the end of the ICBM and out of the front and out of the front being the warhead because when the warheads are shut off when the ICBM shut off yeah when the ICBMs are shut off basically um, they travel up to the upper atmosphere. And then they come back down, like how our, our like our archer shoots. For example, um, if um an enemy is far away, they're not gonna aim it directly at them. They're gonna angle their bow at a certain position in the air and then fire it, cause it's going to come back down. And then the momentum of the arrow is gonna basically um increase the power and damage it does. So when these ICBMs are up in the upper atmosphere and they come back down the fuel and the flame that, that's behind them is going to be pushing that missile to um, to reach like um, like reach 1600 um, miles per hour not 1600 um, 16,000 miles per hour a second so that missile is going to be moving fast and the Lawson is going to send 200 million so imagine how fast these missiles are going to be travelling basically raining down on America Yeah, and it says um, for their tails are like onto serpents, being um, what's it called um, the smoke trail. So when um, when these missiles are fired off, when these missiles are fired off, it's gonna leave a smoke trail, and the smoke trail is gonna look like a serpent's tail. And it says um, and they had and had heads. And with them they do hurt. And then um, this is Joel. Joel two and three. And Joel was basically seeing the same thing that um that John saw that vision of the missiles flying but this is how he described it he said a fire devoured before them and behind them and behind them a flame burning so that fire that devoured before them is the warheads and the flame burning and that's a um, Yeah, that's the propulsion system that causes these missiles to fly. And it says, um, the land is as a garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yeah, and nothing shall escape them. And nothing's going to be able to escape them because when these warheads hit, it's going to let off a, um, let off a burst of, um, like a concentrated heat wind so this Russian wind that's going to be first let off is going to be hot air and people are going to get caught in that and then after the actual fire is going to spread to and basically melt them and then verse 4 it says verse 4 it says the appearance of them the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as horsemen shall say they run and that's what John, John that's what John saw too he said the appearance of them was like horses 
And the reason why it said that Prince Adam was at horses is because when they fired off, they're going to be flying side by side. And it says like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they be. Like the noise of a flame, a fire that, that devoured to stubble as a strong people set in array. And that's going into the, the noise of the these missiles, man. It says, Behold their face, their face, the people shall be much pained. All their faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. And that's basically um, talking about how these missiles are gonna get past. Them. How these missiles are gonna get past the defenses of um, America. They're not gonna be able to defend against these missiles. And it says, Neither shall one first another. Oh, it's fine, I'm, I'm recording this way. And it says, Neither shall one first another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. And the reason why they're not gonna be wounded is because. Um, they have, they have um, these um, guidance systems inside them, so when they're troubled or being fired at, they're able to manoeuvre and escape. And it says, they shall run to and fro in the city, they shall run upon the wall and they shall climb upon it, climb upon the houses, they shall enter in at the windows like a thief. And that's going into um, the fire and how it's going to consume the buildings and then it says the earth shall play before them the heavens shall tremble the sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall be joy to shine it and the reason why that's going to happen is because um, when these warheads um, when these warheads are exploding on America's soil it's going to create mushroom clouds and it's going to block out the sun and it's going to block out um the heavens, you won't be able to see the sky because of um, all the mushroom clouds. Um, uh, second fear. Peter was also talking about this too. Peter was talking about um, the day of the Lord as well. And this is um Second Peter. Second Peter three and six and it says, Whereby the world that then was being overthrown with water perished. So the first death was by way of water, which is the flood. But the heavens and the earth, <coughs> which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And it says, I remember um, it talks about the lake of fire and how the earth or Babylon is going to be burned with fire. And that's the second death. And that belongs to, um, to those who take the MLTV. And it says, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is, a, is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as, as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, work, not willing that any should perish, but to all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heaven shall pass pass away with great noise and that great noise is those nuclear missiles hitting the earth and it says and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned off so like the Lord said man he was going to burn Babylon with fire and destroy it with fire 
And those that take the MOTB are going to be burned with fire. And this is Revelation 4 and 9, it says on the third angel followed him saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the, of the wine of the wrath. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And basically, um, and the smoke of their torment ascend up forever and ever. And they have no rest nor night. They have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image. And who is whosoever receives the mark of his name. So those that take the MOTB are going to be burned with this fire. And this is um, Zechariah 14 and 12 and it says And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that fought against Jerusalem Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet And the eyes shall consume away in their holes And the tongue shall consume away in their mouth So the Lord basically gonna burn, burn the people man And this is Ezekiel 22 and 20 and it says um as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow fire upon it to mount it so will I gather you in my anger and in my fury and I will leave you there to mount I'll leave you there and mount you yeah I'll gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and you shall be melted in the midst of And like Peter said, man, that Peter said the elements shall melt with fervent heat. <coughs> and that's what's gonna cause um the lake of fire you hear about or read about. It's basically the elements melting by way of the heat and fire. As silver is melted in the midst of Fuck yeah. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst of And you shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, <clears throat> Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, not rained upon in the day of indignation. And um, that scene we all know too well, which is um, Terminator 2. Terminator 2 Judgment Day, um, when the missiles are gone off and you see that wave of hot air and fire. This is basically what he's talking about here in Isaiah 14 and 23. And it says, I will also make a possession for the bitten and pools of water, and I will sleep it with the beast of my destruction, save the Lord of hosts. And that beast means, um, a sweeping so the Lord says um, he's going to hit it with a sweeping destruction and that's going to come when the warheads are bombarding America
and this is basically um what's going to happen to the one third they're going to be um delivered they're going to be delivered from these nuclear missiles and this is Psalm 91 1 and it says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say i will say of the lord is my refuge and my fortress my God in him will I trust surely he will she shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence and the noise and pestilence being um, those nuclear missiles he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wing shall thy trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler and thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. And that's going to those nuclear missiles, those arrows. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. I remember the Lord said he created the waste that he destroyed. And this is going to the nuclear missiles. And then it says um, Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked Because thou hast made the Lord Yahweh Which is my refuge Even the most high the habitation There shall no evil befall thee Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling But he shall give his angels charge over thee And keep thee in all thy ways and shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. And it says, um, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder and the young lion and the dragon shall not trample it under the under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him with honour. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. It's like the Lord said he was going to um, deliver those that know his name and that's the mark of exemption or the fawa. And um yeah that's about it right now. And I wanna give all praises and I'm glory to your Hal Bashim Hoshai. Double honest to the hours of apostle from Great Milton, he told me his truth. Peace, bless and sight, take to the hope for less. And shallow one.